Sheriff Mike Williams and I'm uh, here with the men and women of Jacksonville Sheriff's Office and we are pleased to be hosting our annual Domestic Violence Awareness Kickoff event. So before I begin, I just want to thank uh, a few people and recognize some leaders from around our, our, our region. Uh, today, present with us are Ellen Seiler, she's the CEO of Hubbard House. Ellen, thank you for being here. Joyce Marr, the Executive Director of the Betty Griffin House in St. John's County. Thank you for being here. We have with us Gerald, uh, Major Gerald Gonzalez from uh, Baker County Sheriff's Office. Thank you for being here. We also have with us uh, Sheriff-elect Daryl Daniels from Clay County. Sheriff Daniels, thank you for being here. Did Chief Pike make it today? I don't think I saw him show up. Uh, we have from the uh, Jacksonville Beach Police Department, Chief Pat Dooley. We also have Lieutenant Mike Key from the Neptune Beach Police Department. I, don't, I do not see St. John's County or Clay County represented today. We have uh, Teresa Simak from the State Attorney's Office and uh, my good friend Dr. Charles Morland from the Mayor's Office. Charles, thank you for being here. Also, the uh, Board President of the Hubbard House, Bob Baldwin, uh, and our Director, Tony Davis. Where's Tony? He was also a board member at Hubbard House. Uh, thank you all for being here today. We also have many members of my JSO staff and, and uh, people representative of our organization. I want to thank them for being here today, but specifically I want to thank Police Lieutenant Sharon Scott and the members of the Special Assault Unit um, who are here and, and do this work in, in this area every single day. Thank you for the work you thank you for being here today. And our victims advocates, Kathy Pinnell and uh, Rosario Austin, I know Ms. Austin couldn't be here today, but we wanted to thank her for her work and acknowledge what, what she does as well for Kathy. So all of us stand up here today to show our commitment in addressing the issue of domestic violence in our region. So we know the importance of working together to make sure that we are a united front on this issue, and we are focused on three things, enforcement, social services, and public education. Domestic violence continues to be a genuine issue in this country. Domestic violence partners may be married, intimate partners, in a dating relationship, have a child together, or related by blood. Children in homes where there is domestic violence are more likely to be abused and or neglected. Even if the child is not physically harmed, they may have an emotional and behavioral impacts of domestic violence. Domestic violence happens in every community and all kinds of families and relationships. Persons of socioeconomic class, culture, religion, sexual orientation, marital status, age, and sex can be victims or perpetrators of domestic violence. Often domestic and family violence is an uncomfortable topic for the public to hear about. But for us, it's a good thing every time a victim finds the courage to call the police and ask us to intervene. I want our officers to answer each and every call that comes in and be prepared to respond, assist, and provide service. And remember, intervention can stop escalation. As of September 8th, there have been 4,329 reported incidents of domestic violence in Duval County this year. This is down just a few incidents from last year, when on September 22nd of 2015, we showed 4,383 reported incidents year to date. These potential victims, the sooner we can help them get the necessary services the first time a domestic incident occurs, the more we can help prevent a domestic murder from occurring in the future. In 2015, there were 17 domestic violence related murders in Duval County. In four of these cases, the suspect also committed suicide. As of Thursday, September 8th of this year, there have been 12 domestic violence related murders in Duval County, and three of these cases were murder-suicide. To break this down even further, three of the cases were a child killing a parent or a grandparent, and eight were adults being killed by their spouse, boyfriend, or girlfriend. Ladies and gentlemen, this is too many domestic murders in our community, especially to those families who have been so tragically impacted by these tragedies. To the victims of domestic violence, please hear this. We have an excellent domestic violence prevention program known as INVEST, the Intimate Violence Enhanced Services Team, which is a collaborative response to domestic violence. The partners are JSO, the Hubbard House, and the City of Jacksonville. Between January 1st and September 8th of this year, the INVEST team have, has reviewed nearly 6,799 reports. 
Out of those, 561 reports were identified as potential cases, with 106 victims accepting the services. But that's fewer than 20% of those we identify as being in harm's way actually accepting that service. The providers are here to help, and please accept their assistance. Between September 2015 and early September of 2016, we have served 1,229 arrest warrants for domestic violence and related crimes. We still have more than 480 active warrants in the system for domestic violence in Duval County. Just remember, domestic violence is not gender specific, race specific, or limited to any one socioeconomic class. It is important to recognize the four main types of, of abuse, which are physical abuse, emotional abuse, sexual abuse, and lastly, economic abuse. More information about the indicators that I just highlighted is available on the Hubbard House website at hubbardhouse.org. All of us here have a common goal of putting an end to domestic violence and helping prevent domestic murder from occurring. To reach our goal, we will continue our partnership with these shelters and law enforcement officials in our neighboring counties. And it is vital for us to raise awareness about domestic violence and about the help that is available at no charge. So I want to thank you again all for being out here today. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Charles Morley, who has a proclamation I believe, from the Mayor. Charles, here. Good morning. Good morning. It's an honor to be with you this morning on behalf of our mayor, who wanted to be here, but he's in London. Here to um, continue to bring awareness to domestic violence, an, an area that, as you heard the sheriff say, we can do so much better. So I'm going to take my time and read this proclamation because it's important for you to hear the words that have so much meaning. Whereas domestic violence is a crime that endangers women, children, and men of all economic, racial, and social backgrounds. And whereas every year it is estimated that more than 25,000 Jacksonville citizens are victimized by the crime that destroys an individual's privacy, dignity, security, and humanity. And whereas the destructive impact of domestic violence is wide ranging, affecting families, corporations, criminal justice systems, medical communities, and society, and whereas it is vital for our community to support victims of domestic violence and their children who suffer grave financial, physical, and psychological losses to impose legal sanctions on the perpetrators of domestic violence and to help perpetrators overcome their abusive behavior. And whereas Hubbard House serves more than 5,000 adults and children per year with recognized programs, resources, and offerings, and whereas Hubbard House strives to increase awareness about domestic violence and eradicate it, making every relationship violence-free. Now, therefore, I, Lenny Curry, by virtue of the authority vested in me as mayor of Jacksonville, Florida, do hereby proclaim the month of October 2016 as Domestic Violence Awareness Month in Jacksonville and call upon all citizens to recognize the integral role Hubbard House plays in our community, eliminating violence against adults and children. Thank you. So thank you, Charles. With that, I'd like to invite uh, Teresa Simak from the State Attorney's Office to come up. Good morning. I'm an assistant state attorney and a supervisor in the Special Assault Division of the State Attorney's Office. Um, it is also my privilege to serve as the chair of the Duval County Domestic Violence Fatality Review Team. That team consists of representatives from Hubbard House, the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office, the Navy, Family Court Services, the Attorney General's Office, the Child Protection Team, University of North Florida, and the State Attorney's Office. Um, that team meets monthly to review and analyze domestic violence homicides that have occurred the year prior. Those are only cases involving adult victims. There is a separate team to review uh, child homicides. In 2015, our team reviewed nine cases which resulted in 11 deaths, including the death of three children. In 2015, 
67% of those cases involved intimate partners. Um, that's down a little from over the last 18 years where it was 76% intimate partners. Um, our team analyzes the cases and makes findings and recommendations based upon contributions from everyone on the team and the information that we have had to review. Um, all nine cases involved male suspects. 82% <clears throat> of the victims were female. Women are still extremely vulnerable to fatality in a domestic violence incident. 73% of the victims were killed by firearms. The presence of and access to firearms <coughs> is extremely dangerous in domestic violence cases. Laws requiring removal of firearms from suspects and defendants need to be strictly enforced by the courts and law enforcement. In the cases we reviewed this year, there were no prior reports of domestic violence between the suspect and the victim. In one case, one suspect did have injunctions against him, but they were from other women. A history of violence needs to be taken seriously. There continues to be a lack of understanding regarding the potential for deadly violence in domestic relationships. We have recommended that you ask yourself or your friends three questions. One, has your partner ever used or threatened to use a weapon against you? Two, has your partner ever threatened to kill you or your children? And three, do you think your partner will kill you? If the answer to any of these questions is yes, you need to recognize that the danger could be fatal. Awareness leads to prevention. In Duval County, approximately 12 cases related to domestic violence come through the state attorney's office each day. In those cases, we have the chance as community partners to intervene. Unfortunately, none of the 2015 cases had prior reports between them, and there was no chance to intervene. <coughs> we need the community, neighbors, friends, family, co-workers, to recognize the signs of domestic violence. We need you to report what you see and what you know, and support those victims so that the community partners that you see before you can refer them to the proper services. If that happens, maybe next year we will have prevented a tragedy, and maybe next year you will have prevented a tragedy. Thank you. Thank you, Teresa. Thank you, Teresa. Uh, with that, I'd like to invite uh, Ellis Island, the CEO of Hub House. Studying the homicides and the fatality report is always sobering, um, but to me the uh, hardest thing is the fact that we did not get an opportunity to intervene, that we did not get a chance to present, prevent those homicides. I talk to survivors a lot, and if it's not the police who's telling them about the services available at domestic violence centers, it's family or friends that are telling them. So it's really important that we not be a silent bystander when it comes to domestic violence. That if we suspect something, we say something. We need to speak up when we suspect. We need to encourage people to uh, call the hotline at 800-500-1119. If we see or hear domestic violence, we need to call 911. Um, we need to give the police the opportunity to intervene and save that life. Here in Northeast Florida, we are really blessed to have strong collaborative relationships with all of our law enforcement branches and our shelters in the state, and with those involved with the system and others in the community. So we work really well together to help eliminate domestic violence and present, prevent these homicides. We just need the chance to do it. On Tuesday, October 4th, the Duval County Courthouse We'll be placing almost 7,000 um, purple flags uh, in a designated area of the courthouse, one for each domestic violence offense that happened during the year. 
and um, we have our, our clerk, uh, Fussell, here with, excuse me, <laughs> here with us today. If any of you supporters would like to be part of that effort, um, you could go to the courthouse at 9 o'clock on Tuesday the 4th, right after the Barbara Ann Campbell Memorial Breakfast at the Hyatt, and they will have the flags there that you can place. To join us at the Barbara Ann Campbell Memorial Breakfast, you can go to our website at www.hubbardhouse.org to get your tickets. Hubbard House serves Duval and Baker Counties. Uh, Betty Griffin House serves St. John's County. Micah's Place serves Nassau County. And Quigley House serves Clay County. This year, all four of our local domestic violence centers are, drawing, are joining together in a social media hashtag you are not alone purple nail campaign to raise awareness we're asking people to paint their ring finger with purple polish I have polish along if anybody would like to do so um, painting your nail purple or wearing a purple <laughs> ribbon during the month can really help aware raise awareness because people are going to say what's that purple nail about or why are you wearing a purple ribbon what does that stand for so that's one way that you can help raise awareness. Sharing our social media posts with others is going to help us reach even more people. So that's another important way that you, the public, can help. If you're living with violence or living in a situation that hasn't turned violent yet, but you're afraid it's going to turn violent, then those three questions that were asked earlier are really important for you to be asking yourself. And they're so important, I'm going to repeat them. Has your partner ever used a weapon against you or threatened you with a weapon? Has your partner threatened to kill you or your children? Do you think your partner will try to kill you? And if you're answering yes to any of these, you need to get help right away because you're in a very potentially lethal situation. I have with us here today a survivor who uh, nearly lost her life to domestic violence and is here to share her story. Asia. Good morning, everyone. My name is Asia Franco, and thanks to the services provided by Hubbard House, I am thankful to say that I am a survivor of domestic violence. Unfortunately, that wasn't always the case. I can remember back to the days when I was being abused. I never felt like I actually fit, fit the stigma of a battered wife, so I didn't feel the need at first to seek help because I, of course, I thought that each fight would be the last fight because I believed him when he said he was sorry and then he would never do it again, and each and every time I, I took him back to um, When I actually realized that he was never going to do it again, or that he was never going to stop. I was actually too embarrassed to admit to anyone, and especially strangers, of how stupid and naive I was. It still, to this day, angers me to think back on how you know I was naive. At that time, I really thought that I was doing good by my family. I was trying to stick it out through thick and thin. Little did I know that each and every day that I stayed in this relationship, it became harder and harder to me. His need to control me grew stronger and stronger until I finally had enough. Once I actually decided to leave, I escaped with my children. Uh, after a few days and dozens of apologetic emails, I assumed that he had calmed down enough for me to go home and grab some of my, mine and my children's belongings. I drove with my family to my apartment in Jacksonville Beach. Um, my abuser, Paul Rentis, then unloaded a 9mm handgun on me and my family as we drove away from the apartment. My 14-year-old niece, Brianna, was shot twice in the head and she died. My son, Joseph, was struck in the face with glass and I was shot three times. Um, I was shot on the side of my face and my back. I had to have my jaw wired shut for weeks and multiple I was in a very bad place. Of course, I blamed myself for my niece's murder. But I started to regularly attend support group sessions at Hubbard House. 
uh, while my son and my surviving niece attended the HARP program, which is Help for at Risk mm -hmm. Youth. Um, according to the statistics that everyone spoke about today, if I had to answer those three questions, it would have been yes to all of them. Um, and it's clear that for whatever reason, people don't know about the great services that Hubbard House has. So they are provided to residents at no cost. Um, what we need to do together is help spread the word. Um, let people know about the services that Hubbard House can give. Hubbard House can do things such as getting help you get an injunction for protection, giving shelter, relocation assistance, counseling, just to name a few. Um, if you have any questions about services, there is a 24-hour hotline, as you guys mentioned, 1-800-500-1119. Um, memorize it if you have to. That's what I did. Um, so again, talk with your friends, your family, your coworkers, your church, anyone that can help spread the word. And Hubbard House is here to help at any time. Thank you. Thank everybody for being here today. Before we close, let, let me remind everyone of something. You know, I'm going to steal a phrase that we use a lot when we talk about domestic terrorism, but really it applies in this case too. You know, if you see something, say something to somebody. Um, and, and even if it's us coming to make a determination of, of whether or not something has occurred or not, make that call. That's what we're here for. So you know, I, I would encourage that to, to happen in our community. You know, so with that, I want to thank everyone for being here today. Um, Ronnie, thank you for participating in the and having a, a you know help raise awareness in the community. Uh, and with that, I think we'd be, be glad to answer a few questions if anybody has any. Yes, ma'am. This is an update on the bail case, which appears to be possibly related to domestic issues. Uh, the last briefing I got, if we can get with you after, I'll get you the most up to date thing, but we he's still at large. So that was since last night, so I think it's more about you. Does that look to you initially like one that might have been avoidable if somebody? You know, I don't know. We'd have to, we'll have to look at it and see. Uh, I, I don't, again, have not been briefed as to the factors that led up to that. Clearly, it's a case of domestic violence, so that's something that we will look at. I have uh, one more question. Just, yes. Um, you mentioned that there have been some instances in your own agency where there have been people abuse domestic violence. Sure. I wonder if you think that you're doing enough to educate your officers to help them when they're under stress and, and experiencing some of those things. Listen, you know, we're taking a hard look. We, we could always do more, and we're taking a hard look at, you know, how officers handle stress and our wellness programs and things that we do to identify that. Um, and in terms of, of domestic violence involved with police officers, you know, we see that we act appropriately, we act swiftly. So it's not something here that we ignore at all. So uh, we can always do better in providing, again, the, those wellness uh, opportunities for officers. We're going to continue to try to improve that. Uh, but specifically about domestic violence, I think when we have an incident, Responses involved. I think it's something that. Anything else? All right. Well, thank you again for being here, and look forward to a uh, a month where we do a lot of activity and raising awareness. Thank you. Thank you.